Their interpreter, Mamdemin, is livid and wants to sue the author. It's, it's intolerable. It's intolerable. So I think that you know the highest authority has to has to maybe write a letter. It would be good if the president or one of his senior advisors wrote a letter to the paper saying, "This is irresponsible reporting." And but this please is let them know. I, they have my support. If they need somebody to sign the letter to, I'll sign it. The article has undone all the president's efforts to make them feel secure and comfortable. The United States military cleared these men in, in 2003. Uh, the Department of Justice uh, cleared them after that. The courts have looked at their cases. Uh, everybody agrees that they're not, uh, not only not a danger, uh, but as far as the terrorism aspect, these men have never, uh, you know, had any, uh, committed any terrorist acts. They have never engaged in any sort of terrorist training. Uh, you know, th these men are not suicide bombers. They that, have not that, done that, that sort of activity. That was reported in various sources that they had, ach had, ach had attended training. Well, I think you have to be careful with what's reported. What's reported is that they had military training, okay? As I've said before, Boy Scouts shooting cans at the county dump have had more military training than these guys have. Not only has America cleared the Uyghurs of any wrongdoing, President Obama, struggling to keep to his timetable for closing down Guantanamo, has personally thanked his Palauan counterpart. When I approached him, uh, he extended his hand to me and says, I want to thank you for the Uyghurs. Beautiful Palau relies on Washington for hundreds of millions of aid dollars, part of what's called the Compact of Free Association, the details of which are currently under review. Part of that is the security meeting where the U.S. pledges to defend the tiny nation. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you? How's it going? Good? Well, they, we uh, just finished the JCM meeting. It was very productive. Uh, Rear Admiral Doug Beazel is from the rapidly expanding U.S. Pacific Command in neighboring Guam. It is, it's always good to have, yeah. uh, have friends back in yeah. Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's something I've learned over the years. It's good to have Palau's Minister of State, Sandra Pierantosi, knows very well the stick that Palau can wield in world affairs. So the Americans are not going to abandon Palau? <laughs> I think it's to their best interest and our best interest, mutually, mutual interest, that they don't abandon Palau mm -hmm. unless they want us to go to China or some other. Just kidding about that. But uh, we both Maybe, but there's no doubt that all of this is being followed very closely in Beijing. She says there have already been threats issued at Palau's New York mission. Yes, China has made threats, but I think. China is a big country and will not try to do something injurious to a small republic of Palau. Mm. I don't think they would like to do something like the situation of a David and Goliath. Mm. Mm. No need to repeat that kind of uh, story. Mm -hmm. But, you know, anything can happen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But locals say already there's a sign of China's displeasure with work stopping on this Chinese government-funded hotel. At the U.S. Embassy, I meet the Rear Admiral again, this time with Mark Besner, America's top diplomat here. There are certain a number of issues that, that China feels obligated uh, to, to bring up uh, on a regular basis. Uh, this issue of the Uyghurs is going to be one of them. Does the rise of the might of the Chinese military and Navy keep you awake at night? The issues uh, associated with China are for, again, a larger context, you know, because it's not just military. There's, as you know, there's uh, relationships on all fronts. So there's diplomatic relationships, military relationships, economic relationships, as well as uh, information. <laughs> Mark Besner's term here is over, and he's heading back to Washington. And I hope to never see any of you guys. <laughs> he's returning to the State Department's office of Australia, New Zealand, and Pacific Island Affairs. Is one of the things you'll be working on convincing the Australians to quietly take the Uyghurs once they've done with their time here? And I'm the man for the job. Yes, indeed. Is it a possibility? Is it uh, that they'll it end up in well Melbourne? Be. 
It could well be. Could well be. Bizdinki amda mishayga kelishimizdiki sabab mo Australia da uygur bir turkim çoğun bir uygur cemaati yaşavat oda. Yani mishayda turup Australia ki yani kaytadım bir talep sunup biz şeyde bir ultraklış kalışını sorsak yani bir mümkünçilige bu kalama diyen məqsətdə bir yəqə bizdən ki, əmdəmiş Avustralıya yenə qədər boğan polaqa kelişimizdəki səbəblərinin birisimiz şu əmdə. What do you think of Australia's rejection of these people? It's strange. It's a big country. And I assumed they were pressured by China to take a position that they did. But in my opinion, the the problem or the uh, dispute over these people between the United States and China is just between them. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Canberra declined to respond to the President's comment, but did say it would consider the latest request for resettlement on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, I think it's extremely disappointing because there's a large Uyghur community in Australia. There's obviously no Uyghur community here in Palau. Australia would be a natural choice for the man to go to. Um, the, the person that we have interpreting for us now is from Australia. So I think the Australia connection just makes perfect sense. Uh, I hope it's not uh, to appease the Chinese that that decision was made. I hope that there was at least some uh, decision that, that this was inappropriate for some other reason. But I don't know what other reason it possibly could be except for Chinese appeasement, which is very unfortunate. On day three, the president organizes a picnic on a private island. For most of the men, it's the first time they've been in a boat or seen the sea. And it's the first time I see them smile so freely. The men continue their quest for Uyghur comfort food. With our honor. When the meat is cooked, they offer the president the first plate. So your first Uyghur meal? It's a serious thing. You know, it's not a symbolic thing. It's from their heart. So I have to eat this. Yes. It's Abraham. We have a lot of people in Australia. 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 Case by case, over to you, Kev. David O'Shea in Palau. And uh, naturally, we sought a response from the Chinese embassy in Canberra to those claims that China had pressured Australia not to take the Uyghurs. The reply was uh, that, quote, those people are members of a terrorist group and should be sent to China to be handled according to law. Meanwhile, it was uh, reported this week that China had executed nine Uyghurs in relation to riots that took place in northwestern China back in July. Next up, where does this country fit into the global scheme of things with next month's historic climate gathering in Copenhagen almost upon us? According to the man who rang the warning bells, British economist Lord Nicholas Stern, Australia has fallen short. It's the most important international gathering since the Second World War. And move over Hollywood and Bollywood, here comes, wait for it, Nollywood, Nigeria's galloping movie industry making waves throughout Africa. Nollywood is everywhere, the actors are getting massive publicity, fame everywhere in every part of the world. 